Hey guys, in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use the global data object within Metasys Extended Architecture. This is a very powerful tool that can really automate a lot of your process. Uh, for this particular demonstration what we're going to be doing is setting up one single point that will actually change an entire building's common set point on all of the VAVs. Alright guys, what uh, we're doing here, I'm going to show you a very easy step in automating the common set point within a building. As you can see here, uh, one of the most common ways to change the common set point within a building is you will either have to go to each individual VAV controller or another way is to do a uh, global search for the common set point and uh, you know either way it takes a little bit of time and there is a way that uh, it can be automated you know as we're doing here I'm showing you how you would do a global search what you would do is you would simply go in type in the name of the particular point you know in this case it would be common you know zone set point and it has to be spelled exactly the way that it is within your system and once you press the search button uh, what it will do is it will actually populate this search window with all of those uh, values and you know that is of course one way that can be used to change an entire building set point you know if you uh, you know if you have an entire building that you run at uh, you know that you do adjustments of uh, set points seasonally which is uh, common in some areas some aspects and uh, what we're doing here is we are just releasing the overrides that are on all of these set points here and of course uh, you know when you create a list like this within the global data search when you command those points it will take just a little bit of time for the command to get out to all of the devices as you can see here, I mean, it, it takes a little bit of network traffic, uh, you know, a little bit of network traffic can slow it down. It does take just a few moments. The larger uh, you're building, the more points you have, the longer it's going to take to uh, complete this. But, uh, it, you know, it's, but it is a very powerful uh, way of doing this as well. But there is a much simpler way that uh, can be done. If you have ever worked on setting up any type of programming within your system and inserting new objects and that sort of thing, you, you know, you will you have a lot of the basic understanding of what you will need to be doing for the step that we are going to be taking. And what those steps are is it's going to be we're going to set up a little bit of logic in here that is going to uh, automate this. We're just going to have a single point within our system that will change the entire building. Now even though we're using the common set point as an example in this video, this can be done with economizer lockouts on air handlers. Uh, it's a great way to share temperature among the different uh, uh, devices within your system. And here what we're going to do is we're going to create a folder and we're simply going to call this folder common set points. You know, these are things that we're going to have common to the entire building, you know, where we're going to have some of this data sharing logic. Once we create our folder, this is where we're also going to create a few of the points that we're going to need for this. And so here is the folder that we've created. So what we're going to do now is to select the folder that we just created. We're just going to highlight it and now we're going to go up to insert because we are going to be inserting an object and that's what this is. The first thing we're going to do is to put an AV point, an analog value. We have to have an analog value for entering the temperature that we want shared among all the controllers. Of course, we're highlighted here as far as our location. We're simply going to select next, and we're going to give this a unique name. 
uh, you know, since this is something that is going to control the entire building, we want to identify that uh, by its in its name. We want to let people know if they see this that it will change the entire building in some way. You know, this is a master common zone set point. There's many things you can name it, but you know, name it something relative to your system, uh, something that uh, you know is familiar to you. Here is the configuration screen. We are going to change our units to degrees Fahrenheit by dropping down this list. Once we have that selected, we are then going to go down to the relinquish default. And this is something that I like doing in these. I don't like leaving this at zero. I do like putting in a relinquish default within these analog values when we are dealing with a common zone set point. That way, the uh, system, if anything ever happens, it should go back to a manageable point, you know, instead of it, you know, going wild. Okay, once we have that object created, the next step that we are going to do, and we can see our object here, once we pull this folder over, this is the point that we just created. You can see it's already put the value at 72 since we put that relinquish default in there. So now we're going to go up, highlight our folder again, we're going to insert another object. We're going to select the global data object for this particular uh, system that we're doing. Now then, of course, you know, once again, it asks for the location. We tell it where we want to put the object that we're creating. Name this something similar to the analog value. It will make it a lot easier for you to identify later if you have to go back in and do any troubleshooting. And once again, you know, you get that, you know, very unique name. Uh, if you do have to go in and troubleshoot, if you do have to go in and make changes in the future as your system changes, it'll be easier for you to do that. You'll notice here in this configuration screen, this red box, this is the master point that this global data object is going to be looking at. It has to know where it is to look for its information. So we're going to click this box. We are going to expand out our network. We're going to drill down and we are going to go to where we put the analog value that we created, which is of course in that same folder. And that is going to be the information that we're going to be passing to all of the devices on the slaves list. Now, don't add all of your devices in under this configuration screen. This is something that I highly recommend that you go ahead, set up the object, uh, save regularly as you are adding objects to this logic block. You know, you need to save your work regularly on this because as you build this system, you will see that it slows down as you're adding the uh, more devices to the slaves lists. And I'll actually demonstrate that here in just a few moments once we get into adding some of these. And of course, this is just our review screen. We're gonna close that out. Now then, we have both our master point and we also have the global data object. Now, what we're going to do is to go back into this. If it is not already checked, make sure that you check the advanced tab for this so you can see everything you need. We're going to press our edit button, and now we are going to add those VAVs to our slaves list. All right, now the slaves list is where... Uh, the devices in this list is where it will be passing the information to. You press this little gray box, it's going to pop up this little window here, and each point has to be added individually. Once you add one of these boxes here, you press add, it creates this little box, and you'll see the gray box there. You will click it, and then you will go down to one of your VAVs. Uh, you know, start from the top or bottom or however it's easiest for you. Simply drop down the VAV and find the individual point. You're for the, in this case, we're going to grab the common zone set point of that particular VAV. Uh, we simply highlight that and we press our OK button. It, it has now linked that 
a global data point, uh, you know, that global point to this particular VAV. We're going to add a few more of these. You know, you can add several, you know, five or six. Add those to your system. You know, go back, find those values within your system, and then save your work regularly. You'll see that it will slow down. The more of these you add to your list, the slower your system is going to perform until you get it completed. Uh, you know, don't worry. Uh, I mean, it is it is something that does slow your system down as you're adding these points, but once you get it up and running, you should not notice it. You shouldn't notice the change, uh, you know, any hesitation within your system. These changes, when you do go in and uh, change your set point, it will not be instantaneous to all of the controllers. The, the logic has to go one device at a time, and it goes right down that slave list the way that you introduce it. Uh, the way that you link each of those, it will follow that slaves list and write that value into each one of the controllers. And you can see here we're just continuing adding the VAVs for this. And it's, you know, you, you can't add multiple, unfortunately. It's, it's a one-at-a-time process. But it really does help. Uh, you know your system you know this building automation is what it's about We're, a little bit of work now pays off later you know it simplifies things uh, makes things go a little bit smoother for us you know that's a lot of what we do uh, you know we try to uh, make the things work smoother we try to let the technology do our work for us where I hear I'm going to press the add button the save button and you know I want to go back in and uh, you know start again basically you know like I say save this regularly you don't want to add a bunch of these in only to have your system crash on you and you lose all the work that you've done and so we simply click the gray button again we're brought back to our window and I want you to notice the hesitation in this when I press the add button I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger for us and I'm gonna press the add button and let's see okay you can see it just hesitate there for a minute you know it's not doing it instantaneously you can see the hesitation within the system I mean it's, it's quite obvious it's not just an instantaneous uh, you know add-in for each of these and like I say it will get a little slower each time when you go back into this and I'm just going to go ahead and add several of these now, not too many, but I just want to go ahead and try to get a few of these done. Something else I wanted to show you is this little drop-down window here that you see is currently as present value. Depending on the type of logic that you are adding, you can change that to whatever you need it to. Now that we have the majority of our building added to this, what we're going to do is actually demonstrate what it does. I'm going to open up here a uh, window to where I can do a global search for all the common zone set points to where you can see all of them change at once. But uh, you need to know that within the configuration of the global data share, uh, you can do a refresh time of uh, however many minutes. It comes set up as a default that it will rebroadcast its value uh, at two minutes. That is something that you can change. You can change it to five minutes, 15 minutes, whatever. You know, you don't necessarily need that changing every two minutes in your system. I mean, it's not something that you would really need it to do that very often. But, you know, if you ever get into a situation where you were trying to figure out why a set point continues to change back or whatever, you know, that, that may be it. That's a good possibility. It's just, that's what has happened. You know, like global data has rebroadcast a value and it has changed a set point within your system, that, you know, if you're using it that way. it uh, An override or whatever can lock it out. So, uh, you know, that's very simple to do as far as that goes. If you need to temporarily have one of your controllers different from the others. Of course, you can go back in and delete that from your uh, logic block if necessary. What we're going to do here, I'm going to command the value and our master value. And once I press the send button, you will see it broadcast 
that new set point to all of these VAVs. It takes it a few minutes. It will follow that slaves list and go one at a time down through there. It's not something that it is instantaneous to any of them, but it is, uh, you know, just one at a time is how that it will write to those. And I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to change that back. It's a very powerful tool. You might want to check it out. Uh, you know, it's, it's something that I know that you will use. It's very, very powerful. You can see here that it is changing the values that they are all following the master point. I hope you liked the video. I'd appreciate it if you would give it a thumbs up. Also, drop me any comments and questions down below. And thanks for watching. Oh, 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 oh,